Good day everybody. I am finally outside here in Finland. It's usually snowing or it's slushy, it's raining or something and it's usually quite dark. But today it's uh, very sunny so I decided to take my Osmo pocket and tell you a little story how to become a product designer without fancy schools. So fast forward to high school. I applied to School of Applied Arts and Design, that's like artsy high school and this is a huge milestone for me. This is where I first got acquainted with digital design. And it was not in school, it was via friends, schoolmates. A friend showed me digital tablet, uh, cameras, but also there was this blog boom. So of course I had like at least five blogs, we probably had also. And it was a huge deal to customize your blog with CSS. And that was my first touch with front-end development, which proved to be extremely important for my future career. But once uh, high school was done, I was a little bit lost because I didn't have idea what to do next. And uh, back in Croatia, we didn't have, you know, schools that would excite me, like colleges that would excite me enough to consider them as a viable next step in education. So first I enrolled in IT college. It was oh, a massive effort to get in because I didn't have all these subjects, classes uh, that were highly technical, but somehow I managed to get in. Uh, I took like tutoring the whole summer when everyone was having, you know, a party time because high school is over. Uh, but that year on college proved to be quite horrible because I just couldn't keep up with all other students and professors were literally laughing at my face when they realized that I am coming from artsy school so I decided this is not a way to go and I had to act quickly so I had a plan I will go to this fashion college that interests me like literally zero percent but I believed in myself that I can make it because uh, it was like a deal if you're in the first 10 then you don't have to pay tuition and that was super important because I seriously didn't have budget for you know anything else so I had to get in and it was quite tricky because I uh, persuaded my parents that you know I'm gonna do it they were concerned about me abandoning this first IT college but uh, I don't know, stars aligned and I managed to get in. I was uh, in the first 10 and uh, I got in. Uh, but like I said, this was a huge success and also a huge failure because I didn't want to go there. I just wanted to have a diploma and I knew that I don't have much other choice. So I started to feel like, you know, my life is heading to directions that are not very good for me in long run. But, you know, I, I, I at least figured I will have some sort of diploma, maybe it's gonna be easier to find a job. So what happened next was I was stuck in college because back in the day, I don't know what situation right now, but you couldn't easily get a job um, as a young adult. So companies hired students because it was much lower cost for them to pay for a student to do the same job as somebody who completed the college. But anyway, uh, I had to stick with the college for quite some time, extra two years, just because of this opportunity to at least work something. And uh, when I was about to run out of time, I had to graduate, otherwise they would toss me out of college. I did that. And then what happened was, I went to the uh, job seeking office where you need to apply as a job seeker when you're done with your education. And that was like a first, you know, lap. Uh, to my face i gave that lady there my diploma and she said how about uh we look for some jobs uh, for in a like a fashion store like a boutique store so you can work as a cashier at that point i thought this is going nowhere i, I mean how can you even say that to a person who just invested so much time and effort into college i could have done that without any college to work as a you know cashier in some store but then something miraculously happened. Uh, I was browsing the internet and I saw some e-commerce store that was made by some company in Croatia and I thought it looks and works great, like nothing I've ever seen before. So 
I was proactive. This is a key takeaway right here. I was super proactive. I sent them email. Hey, do you need a designer? I'm a designer. I would like to help you with your product. And after a year of, you know, trying to make some sort of deal, they actually hired me. I mean, the salary was crap, but at least I had to, uh, at least I could put like a reference that's connected to design in my resume and that was super important it's really hard to you know make that first step to break breakthrough and have that relevant experience in your resume but just because i was proactive and asking i got that chance after that i worked there for a year and something or i, I can't even remember uh, i was again jobless and I, i couldn't find any design job so I went back <laughs> to the roots and I was uh, hired by this Apple reseller store as a cashier basically. It was a horrible job. Uh, we had quotas and it was extremely hard to work in such conditions. But you know, I had to pay my rent. I was living um, outside a uh, parents' home so I had to take care of myself from you know, when I was almost 18. And then what happened was I was getting a little bit like uh, discouraged that my career will never start, years are just passing by. So I started to offer my services pro bono to associations. That's takeaway number two. Nonprofits need help. And while you need to put a lot of free effort there, it's definitely something that will bring you new pieces in your portfolio, new experience, and even maybe some referrals. I mean, if you're, you know, super great, Uh, in super great uh, relationship with uh, whoever runs this non-profit, maybe your future employer can call them and they might give you a good reference or something like that. So it's a great source of, you know, these portfolio pieces and relevant experience because you are working on projects. So I did that for a little bit, like some websites and all. Uh, and then what happened was uh, I couldn't find jobs. So I was thinking, what what's next? What can I do? Uh, to find a design job uh, and I was getting a little bit uh, hesitant that I will ever find a job in design so I figured maybe I should work on my development skills so I bought like 10 euro um, tutorial from Udemy about Swift and iOS programming and for I don't know six months or more I was doing that in all my free time and I managed to publish an app uh, That's another story how I managed to do that because you need to pay something, right? But maybe I will tell you some other time in some other vlog. But anyway, I managed to publish that app and that actually, like, my portfolio was starting to, you know, get filled with relevant stuff. So I, I was on Facebook when Facebook was still, still relevant and I saw that one startup that was just funded in my hometown uh, is seeking for an entire team. And I messaged the CEO, hey, do you maybe need a designer? Again, point number one proactiveness I would like to help you with your product and I don't know again stars aligned and she said yes uh, come to a job interview and I was hired immediately after that and I worked there again for a year I have to say these job experiences in Croatia were quite horrible for me and it was quite traumatic but then it, it was obvious that this is going nowhere um, I, I was very reluctant that I will ever find a decent job in design field so I packed my bag bought one-way ticket to Finland and decided to try it out to see if I can find a job here let me tell you more about that from some another angle this might be a little bit darkish so at that point I never flew with a plane I never really traveled so I didn't know what is waiting for me and I had to switch planes uh, in the meantime and <laughs> it was it was quite something it was a big day for me and also I was like completely alone so you know let's just say uh, I cried like never before let me see if I can jump through the rock Ugh, I can and uh, well uh, I actually went to this acquaintance I met on this uh, online school for coding treehouse And we kind of stayed in contact for a long time, like a couple of years. And she was willing to, you know, take me in and offer. I offered to let's share a rent. I will try for a few months if I can find a job. And if I can't, well, I'm just gonna, you know, tuck my tail between my legs and return back to Croatia. If I manage to find a job, that's it. I'm saved. Finally, life can start. 
So how I finally got to Finland is yet again another story for a vlog because it's super funny. It's like <laughs> traumatic, but it's funny. But anyway, I was uh, I was a little bit lucky because I was freelancing for this one boutique agency back in my home city. So I had some fuel as in money to get me going for a couple of months. I didn't have savings or anything like that. I mean, I was poor. So I was started, I started to apply for anything I could find online and I got like a couple of interviews which is pretty much nothing but actually one of these worked out after months of negotiating uh, sh like showing my work and talking with them uh, I actually got an offer for a, from a Finnish company from a Finnish startup but it was like quite tight schedule because I was already running completely out of money and I was already looking that last week uh, for tickets back home because I was like done I couldn't I couldn't do this anymore but then literally the last day when it was uh, a decision to buy a ticket or not I got an email from that company hey we might want to make an offer for you do you want to take it and I was like yes I mean at this point I was so relieved because that was my chance so maybe like third takeaway from this well this this one is difficult because if, if you're coming from a little bit less economically developed and stable country I'm still getting messages here I hope that you don't mind uh, maybe you should consider relocating uh, throughout my four years in Finland I met many foreigners as myself and they all relocated because of the job and to be quite honest, I don't know if I would work in design if I didn't take that stupidly, extremely hard, risky step. It was not stupid now, I know, but it, it seemed stupid back in the day. And finally, try it in a different country that's better than my home country. So I guess that's the third takeaway. If you can't find your luck in your native country because of reasons, don't be afraid to relocate. It's hard, but it's an option. And I always recommend people like, you know, take that leap of chance. It's a new adventure. Try it. And, you know, once in Finland, I got on my feet and uh, it took like uh, several years to uh, start saving a little bit to purchase like necessities for life because I really had nothing. I came here with one suitcase uh, and, uh, you know, little by little, I got more experience. My LinkedIn looked better and better. So I was able to actually contact uh, different companies uh, to maybe seek for better opportunities so I switched company and then I stayed there for a couple of years and gained more experience I'm actually going down a very steep path oh, <laughs> I made it and after that company I actually got invited to uh, go through the interview process with Volt if you're from Europe or Israel or Japan or countries like that you probably know about this company it's a huge startup uh, and uh, you know I passed all the tests and interviews and now I'm here so basically from cashier that couldn't find design job back in my home country I managed to get to this other country Finland and now I work in this respectable super huge startup as a product designer so it's possible. You just need to be a little bit crazy, I guess, in the meantime. And never, ever stop investing in yourself. It doesn't have to mean that you need to put, like, money. Uh, just learn, because internet is a endless pool of knowledge. And people are sharing their knowledge all the time. Use it into your advantage. Don't stop learning. This was my story, in short, in very short. I still have a lot of anecdotes to share from my journey. But you know, maybe. But you know, maybe you can uh, skip all that. Uh, very risky. Let's move to another country without a like particular plan thing, and use YouTube and other services to educate yourself. Because you don't have to have school. People are hiring people without fancy schools, and it's perfectly fine. That said, I want to share another piece of information with you. I would really use a mentor back in the day to guide me to 
avoid all that hassle I had to go through. So I decided to offer mentoring for everybody following my channel, your friends, family, share with people. You will find a link to my website about mentoring in description. Check it out. Uh, I have to say it's not free. I actually helped a lot of people in the past year or years actually with all kinds of design stuff uh, but you know I want to commit more to YouTube more to helping so I seriously need to start charging <laughs> just a little bit some fair price for all the effort I put into this so if you want to mentor with real life experience a lot of experience check my website and uh, you know apply even one session can be a game changer because you can get very compact set of information in one session and it could save you hours, maybe even years of hard work and discovering everything yourself. So check it out and apply. If you don't find time that is suitable for you, just send me an email, we will figure something out. And also if you know somebody who could use this, share with them.